PepsiCo, stock ticker PEP, currently trading at $170 per share. We can see this is one of the very few stocks that over the past year is actually up. We can see they're up almost 7%. Now, they did recently release their Q3 earnings, and it was all good news. They reported strong earnings and strong revenue, which really kind of boosted their stock price over the past few days, as we can see right here. If we take a look at the past month, we can see before the earnings were released, they were trading around $160 per share, and they jumped up afterwards almost up to $174 dollars per share. So in this video, we're going to be jumping into my stock valuation spreadsheet to see if this is a company we should consider buying or selling. And on this spreadsheet, we're going to look at four different valuation models. We will be looking at Graham's valuation, a discounted cash flow model, a multiples valuation, and a dividend discount model. And all four of these valuations will roll into our output tab. So let's go ahead and jump over to our stock screener. If you'd like to be able to download the spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. But we'll come over here and we will plug in the stock ticker PEP and hit enter. We can see all the data will automatically load in. Now we're currently looking at a 500 day chart. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more and look at a 365 day chart. We can see it's been pretty choppy recently. Um, come over here and look at the dividend data. They're paying out $4.60 per share, which gives them an okay starting dividend yield at about around 2.7% with a payout ratio at 63%. Now analysts currently have a target price of $183 per share. That is a bit higher than the current trading price, but something we do need to point out that's really important as well is the beta currently sitting at 0.56. You should not see a whole lot of volatility in this stock due to that reason right there. Now let's go ahead and jump into our first valuation model, which will be Graham's valuation. Valuation model invented by Benjamin Graham, one of the greatest investors of all time, wrote the book The Intelligent Investor and was also one of Warren Buffett's mentors. And here's the formula he lays out for us to calculate intrinsic value. So we can see we have the earnings per share for Pepsi listed right here. We then need to multiply this by seven, which is the price to earnings of a company with no growth. And then we apply our growth rate projection, which we can see right here after looking at industry and expectations and analyst expectations and doing a little bit of my own research, I decided nine was a pretty close to accurate growth rate projection. Now moving forward, we multiply that by 4.4, which is the average yield of AAA corporate bonds. And once we've done all of that, we divide by Y, which is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. And at the time of this video, it's pretty high sitting at 4.87. When we put all of this together, we come to an intrinsic value of $101 per share. Now that is quite a bit lower than the current trading price. And a big reason of that is due to the current yield on AAA corporate bonds driving this value down. Earlier this year, it was as low as 2.8. So if I put 2.8 right here, we can see we come to an intrinsic value that is very different, a little bit higher than that current trading price, but the current market conditions are really pushing this valuation down. So let's go ahead and jump over to our next valuation model, which is going to be our discounted cash flow model. And to perform this model, we need to project a growth rate to the future free cash flows for the company. So you can see I plugged in the historical free cash flow right here. So we can see year over year growth rates for this company. Over the past few years, it's been an average of about 5.8. Moving forward, I'm projecting a growth rate of about 8% again after looking at analysts and industry expectations. So I projected that growth rate to the future free cash flows and the terminal value, which is the sum of all the future free cash flows past the year 2030. I then found the present value of those free future free cash flows, added them together, added the company's cash and cash equivalents, and subtracted out their total debt to find their equity value. Once I had that, I divided by the shares outstanding and came to a discounted cash flow price per share of right at $111 per share, which again, somewhat close to Graham's valuation, a little bit higher, but let's keep moving forward and look at our multiples valuation. So we have a few decent comparables for our multiples valuation, and the idea behind it is we should be looking at companies that are similar in structure to Pepsi and using something like a price to earnings multiple to see how the market is valuing companies that are similar. So we're taking companies like Coca-Cola and Monster, taking their stock price, dividing by the earnings per share to get our price to earnings multiple. We then take the average price to earnings multiple of these companies, multiply by Pepsi's earnings per share, and we come to an intrinsic value of $220 per share. Now that is pretty high compared to its current trading price. We can see the average price to earnings for these companies sitting at 31.5. We jump over to our stock screener and look at Pepsi. We can see their price to earnings is only 24.35. So most of these companies do have fairly high price to earnings as we can see here, but Pepsi still has a lower price to earnings on average compared to its competitors. Maybe a slight indicator that it is undervalued. Now, looking at our last valuation, the dividend discount model, I love to look at this valuation because it shows me how much a company is worth worth based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing. So what I've done is I've plugged in the quarterly dividend payouts here so we can see how much they've been paying out over the past few years. This allows us to see our year over year dividend growth rates of 15.28, 2.9, 7.12, and 5.08. So year over year, that's an average growth rate of about 7.6. 
Moving forward, I am projecting a growth rate of about 5.5%, a little bit lower than that average growth rate, but still decent. And when we look at the payout ratio, um, it's currently sitting around 63.3% and a decent free cash flow growth rate. I do think that dividend will be sustainable. So after applying a discount rate of 8%, we come to a dividend discount model price per share of $181.46. So when we jump over to our output tab, we can see all four of our valuations. Grams at 101, multiples quite a bit higher at 220, discounted cash flow at 110, and dividend discount model at 181. So really our valuation models are giving us actually a pretty wide range. It's one of those few scenarios where we see that multiples and dividend discount model fairly high, the grams and discounted cash flow fairly low. And this is one of the reasons that we do multiple uh, valuation models because it's going to let us see how the company is performing as a whole in different sectors. So when we average all four of these together, we come to an intrinsic value of around $153.55 per share. That is a bit lower than the current trading price. But let's say we want to apply a 10% margin of safety on top of that. Based upon that, we would come to an acceptable buy price of around $138 per share, meaning now is not a great time to buy this company. Now, I know there's a lot of people that would argue that now is a good time. They just recently had good earnings. But for me, as a value dividend investor, Investor, I'm looking for quality opportunities to buy in at low prices. To me, this just seems like an example of a company that does trade at a premium and for obvious reasons. This is a very well-known company, very strong business model as we all know. It's got a strong brand. It's had great dividend growth over the years. They just recently became a dividend king and people are going to flock to these types of investments when we do have market downturns. They feel they're a lot safer and they can rely on that dividend. But as for me, I'm going to be looking for more quality value dividend opportunities. I'll keep this company on my watch list, but I don't plan on adding any shares in the near future. So go ahead and let me know what you think of this company in the comments down below if you plan on buying or selling. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.